Hello, hello, hello. Wednesday evening, 2.50. God bless you, God keep you in perfect peace and harmony with his will. Woo, and God will move mountains. Church was fantastic, as always. The subject was about Joshua. Uh, remembering the past, something to that effect, and uh, you know, it's okay to remember your past, especially when you use it for your strength. It's basically what the pastor was saying. And also, he talked about how, which I didn't really know. <laughs> yeah, the Israelites, God parted the sea for them. But when Joshua, Joshua was getting ready to walk toward the sea, the Jordan River said they had to walk. And then the river departed. So he's like, yeah, sometimes you just got to walk by faith. And you're just looking for it to open up. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, because I just walked by faith. I didn't walk, but I just drove by faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As soon as I left church, I jumped down that highway. I got, I know I was in that vicinity. But after I looked at it, I'm like, uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. Car action, no. So whatever God's will is, his will is. So I just got to rethink things. But what's awesome is I just want to testify to this. Being in God's will. And not in my own. And learning through this aloneness. This isolation that I've been in. No relationships. Truly, truly with outside people. Except really with my kids, my family, immediate family. But being able to just transfix on his word. You know, just, just, you, God, 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 God. The devil, I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't like saying devil, but evil said Boy said, now nah, don't go check it out. Now nah, wait, just drive straight over there. Go on over and look for not. Now nah, you go on and test them waters. Go on over and see. See what the enemy got for you. Because <laughs> I don't know if it's got out of the enemy, but, but go see it. Because <laughs> I ain't lying. I was looking. I was like, for real? Oh my God, it's fire. It's fire. You know, I, I thank God though. I talked to my cousin Michelle, yeah. She gave me the guidance, but yeah, she was on point with that. She, you know, I didn't get lost, praise God. And plus, this is this is a testimony. This is how God works. As I'm driving over, there are certain numbers that I see that I know are godly that's in my life. But also, as I'm driving, right in front of me is when I'm hesitating, I pass the clock thing. I'm thinking like, oh my God, I'm lost. All of a sudden, I look in front of me. Why the church, the back of a car say Liberty University? I mean, Liberty Church. I said, oh, my God. And then as I rode over there, there are some awesome, beautiful churches over in Indiana. Oh, my God. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, God. So, well, praise the Lord. Well, I told you my destination accidentally, but I'm so honest. Hello. So, yeah. So, yeah, beautiful over there. Beautiful, peaceful, and quiet. It's just a serenity when you're there. But I was on edge because I'm like, please don't let this car break down over here because there's no left or right. So, God took me over there, came off. I mean, I, the car drove fantastic. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I parked it, so I'm going to wait and check it, at, check it out. And Because uh, it's real, real hot when you're in it. You can tell the engine's hot. But I'm telling you how God shows up. And this is my testimony. A car that's known to break down. The head gas is supposed to be blown. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because this car just performed a miracle. So I'm like, if God could take this car over there that's supposed to have a blown head gasket. Drove all the way in another state. To another in city. Went to another part of the city. Yes. <laughs> that's a miracle. Believe me. And then it, it did more. Cut off and started back up. It's been just showing off. It's just showing off. God just showing off. I ain't lying. <laughs> I said, sweet Jesus, thank you. The light didn't blink. Any other time, if I'm traveling a long distance, the light blinks. It didn't blink. So praise God. So I just been through tunnels and everything. Places that I didn't, I hadn't been. So, I mean, it, God is so awesome. I'm riding in pure traffic. I'm talking about, whoa, car break down, you, and somebody smack you, you over. And then, I don't know about your testimony, but this is how awesome my God is. God will, as, as I was driving, 
and I was coming along some of the roads, I noticed a car was broke down and some teenagers were in there. And they were sitting on the side of the road. So they seemed like their cars coming because I would have pulled over, which helped, you know, I wish I could have helped. But I seen that they probably called somebody at the roadside assistance. And gosh, to me, he shows me that could have been you. That could have been you, but look how I'm keeping you. And so that's why I said, I'm just going to readjust. I'm not going to turn it down. I don't have an opportunity to turn it down. But I'm going to go. I'm just going to have to adjust, readjust some things and just plan some stuff out. But what I've learned in the past, I talked about it today in the sermon, is that discernment. I thank God for discernment because I always prayed for it. Now I know that I have it. You know, I'm not saying I'm above anybody, but I thank God I have some discernment to take a chance and go over there now. Because if I would have took a chance at the last minute to go over there, I would have been running around searching. I would have eventually found it, but I would have went around searching. And who knows, you know? So I, I thank God for preparedness. Praise God for that. You know, don't sit back and sit and guess, guess yourself. Prepare. And this, uh, and that, pro, uh, uh, what's the word? Procrastination. I'm going to wait till the last minute and go over there. I'm going to make it. Nah, I'm going to go a little early and I'm going to. Now, nah, go check the place out. God sent it. You go on over there and see what he got for you. Check it out. See what you can do and what God's going to do. And, you know, God showed up and he showed out. If I had to, yeah, I could drive over there. But really, wisely not. The car needs to be taken care of, you know. I love in the Bible because I, uh, I used to always question when uh, uh, Jesus was in the uh, 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 Gethsemane. Yeah, when he was there, uh, garden, they said it's a garden, but when he was in Gethsemane and he was being tested and the devil told him, said, go up on that building and throw yourself out. But I used to say <laughs> in my head when I was younger, you know, I'm just young. I'm just telling on myself, hello, the type of person I am. I'm pretty sure you find out a lot about me. But yeah, you know, I was like, well, he's God. He's Jesus' son. Why don't he go on down there? Why don't he jump? You know, and then it talking through my talking to my older cousin, you know, he's real biblical and and he had told me, you know, you don't test the hand. When God says don't test my hand, you don't, why would you try God? The devil's trying to tell you to try to test God and, and prove him. But God's not telling you. You know, God might let you fall. He might have let, you know, Jesus talked about it too. Well, why am I gonna listen to you? That's really what it was about. And I didn't understand that. It wasn't about if God would do it, would, could, and do for him because he was his son. The point was, I am who I am. You don't test me. If I tell you to do it, you do it. But you don't let no man, no devil, no demon in hell, nothing. You don't let nothing tell you what to do and how, and how I'm going to respond. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's when I was younger. That's how I start understanding, and that's when God became real in my life. Like I said, he was always real, but I went, more and more I was digging about him. And that's when I started getting a, getting a relationship. My relationship started growing more with him because then I started questioning. And I've always been a child. I've been, always been very inquisitive. Big word. <laughs> when you see me do this, how you, I do my kids lots of time. If they say a big word, we say a big word. I always say big word, and we laugh and joke about it. A little bit like people do the pinch buggy thing, but yes, I've always been very questionable. Uh uh, you can't just say anything to me. So yeah, if anything you want to find out about me, that's how I am. Do what? Uh uh, now go do what? Jump what? Go sit down. Do what? I gotta stay after school. Do what? Now not saying I was always rebellious because I was a teacher's pet and stuff like that. But mm, it was some times like, what? <laughs> As I got older, when I was younger, no. Because my teachers didn't play that. Uh-uh. Miss Rose, Mr. Cleo, uh-uh. Nah, Mr. Michael Child, oh, nah. Uh-uh. Miss Diane, Miss Rose, oh, nah. You sit down. They, they didn't even tell us twice. They just told you sit down, then they gave you a look. Like, I wish you would. And when I went to school, you couldn't act like you were going to talk about calling your mother. But anyway, let me get back to my point that I was making. Is that uh, God said we don't test him. And so that's why 
the point I was making, I'm trying to cook me something to eat. Uh, the point I was making is that, yeah, I wasn't going to sit back, I'm a test guy. I, I'm ready to do his will. You know, I know he got things for me to do. And, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to go on and drive on over here anyway. And, and uh, I know he got me. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. When he said test me, he's talking about a miracle. That means I got to do what I, he's telling me to do and let's make a step. He didn't say every step of the way, it's not going to be a problem or a situation that's going to arise. That's not going to come and you have to be tested there. So, you know, when faith is being tested, it don't mean, hey, after I do this, after I do that, yeah, everything's going to be okay. Okay, yeah, I got the instructions. What do you want me to do? Okay, now everything's going to be hunky-dory. No, uh-uh. You got to keep on walking just like the pastor said today, which was very powerful. You got to keep on walking until that sea part. Are you going to walk until that vision comes to pass? And you're going to have to test each thing. You know, you're going to test each thing, test people and all those things. Test the car, test everything. Don't take nothing for granted. Don't jump out here thinking God got you and everything. Yeah, God got you when he tell you he got you. Other than that, don't be running around here trying to play games and holler, yeah, you know. You get too cocky. And I've seen people do that. I've seen a lot of people do that. I know uh, tomorrow I'm going to go do this. I know tomorrow I'm going to do that. Next week I'm going to take this or that. You know, and, uh, uh, oh, God, I almost said his name. Uh, the motivational speaker, uh, Les, yeah, Les Graham, he made a statement. He told a story one time about uh, a person kept on talking about what they was going to do one day, and the next thing you know, they died, you know. And uh, I always think about that, and that's true, you know. So many times you get people that get real cocky, and it's like, next week I'm going to do this, next week I'm going to do that. You know, like they in control of their tomorrows and, and everything. And so, yeah, I love the spirit of discernment. Just wait on God and and practice. <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what I did. Practice. Put things into practice. If he's telling you to do something, practice. Because he's strengthening you. And today, believe me, he strengthened my faith. I almost said a bad word. <laughs> because I ain't laughing. I was, trying, I was like, what? I was like, uh-uh, I'm not even going no further. I'm not even trying to drive all the way to the door. I see, okay, I'm in the area of it. And then when you get there, there was, the traffic just dies. You know, I'm like, mm, I take the bus. And praise God, I seen the bus. And that's that's another thing that gave me hope. I seen the car with Liberty Church on it because there was a Liberty Church in Kentucky. But that was evidently one there. They, that person was from there. Also, I noticed... Here comes the bus up the street. It was coming back to Louisville. So I was like, okay, I'm on point. I will be on the tour. <laughs> you know, and really, what I love about the spirit of the sermon also, and walk up with God, and how he tests my wisdom, is that it would be wise to, to take the bus because taking the car that great distance is putting a lot of wear and tear on the car when I already know the car is sickly. You know, yeah, it performed great. God did that. God did that. But who's to say he would do that tomorrow? You know, he let me go over to see. He gave me, I, I'm just learning him. I, I love that about him. To me, he's like a jigsaw puzzle. He's one of them, uh, it's not a thousand pieces, like <laughs> a billion piece puzzle. And I just have to figure him out. I got to figure out where this puzzle go. And like I said, he got me over there and he let me see. It's a little tedious, you know. And so, yeah, I might want to take a different route. It reminds me, uh, I heard somebody tell a story one time. I don't know what where it was. But it was something about back in the Bible days when people traveled. Back then, they had to walk. They was on foot most of the time. You didn't always take chariots and stuff. A lot of times they were walking. And so what takes us maybe a, a hour or whatever to get to and fro, back then it might have taken them two or three days to make their, journey, their journeys. And so I was thinking about that. You know, you, you have people that could come out, spies or whatever, could come out and kill you and all this type of thing. But you know, you knew you had to get to your destination. You know, and, and you prayed along the way or whatever. And, uh, you know, and that story always, uh, it, it, it was good for me. 
And so it taught me. I, what I t had taken out of that is that when I'm going places, this is just me. When I'm going places, I ain't lying. I'm not fake. I'm going to tell you real talk. I will have, I got my gospel music with me. I have me some gospel CDs. And as a matter of fact, I was on the gospel station. Wasn't nothing really coming in at first, but all of a sudden the gospel station came in and they were singing and everything. And they was doing their talking. But I praise God for that because it gave me comfort. And I think that when, I'm glad God doesn't do everything for me. Because I, I do my little whining or whatever and it seemed like it would be great. But if God did everything for me, took me over there and the car was working perfect, then I'm going to jump into me. Because I'm quick to do it. I get in me real quick. Well, hey, I made it over there. I'm back and forth. Then I get a little cocky. Well, you know, you know me, I, I, I take my time and get there, you know. And I've always been on time and stuff. But I just know a lot of time in the past I talked about that. Don't forget where you came from. When God blesses you and he puts you into your vision, into your dream, when he gets you where if he promised you, if He God promised you he was going to do something for you, he's going to do it. It may be delayed or whatever, but it's going, it's going to be done. But he said, when you get there, don't take and be cocky. Don't forget where you came from. And that's powerful. And that's why I said I love trusting God. And he is like a puzzle. And I like that he don't just give me everything. Because he knows me better than I know myself. And so it's good that let me go ahead and do what he wants me to do. Catch the bus or whatever. Because I got to trust him. If I'm taking the car, I'm trusting me. Well, I'm going. I got everything. Everything's comfortable. He's taking me out of that comfort zone and he's putting me in the faith zone because I have to rely on faith. I have to rely. And, and this is something that I don't believe is said often enough. I don't know. I don't. I, I've heard people say, God has, yeah, God has taken a headache away and God's healed them. But here's another thing that we can look at too. God knows our bodies. And with me, he helps me function. And like I said, a lot of times, I got to go, got to go. I'm one of the bathroom people. And so I didn't have that faith that God was going to look out for me when in situation he has before. But that's how quick, just that quick, I was running on me and relying on me and not relying on him. And so often, just that quick, we forget what faith is. Faith is not just relying on God to get us a job, our, our walk through a, a walk through adversity and then get to the other side and see the blessing. You know, it's not that. It's not that. Faith is not just uh, I'm going to do God's will uh, by believing in him that he will take care of me. He will take care of my family. He will take care of my finances. It's not that. I'm going to give you another metaphor. And this is how God did today. And it was beautiful. I mean, just beautiful. Just how nature cooperates with God. This is just this is what I'm talking about. How bodies can, uh, God can conform our bodies to do his will. And he conforms nature and the, and the clouds and the rain to do his will. As I, as I was going out, and everybody can testify to this, as I left church, it was beautiful sun. I mean, just a beautiful summer. But as I was driving and I made it to the place, it was sunny. As soon as I left and I was starting to head home, right in front of me was a black cloud. I mean, a black cloud. And so as I was riding toward the cloud, because my wind is broken, it won't go up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lord, don't let it rain. Don't let it rain. It's going to get me. I'm steady riding, though. I'm riding. And it starts to rain, and it's raining, and it's raining, and it's sprinkled. And then the cloud got darker. And then I kept riding. Then the cloud got lighter. The cloud got lighter. And the day, it just burst back bright. And I, as I got too closer to it home, everything just mellowed out. And then I thought about it, just for that moment. Ah, uh, you know, and I'm still spooked a little bit in there because I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not touching the ground at home yet. <laughs> let, let me, you know, 
I'm going to tell on myself. Sometimes I'll be like, I can't stand Louisville. You know, Louisville getting on my nerve. Well, honey, please, let me be something real, real fine. I'll be hurrying up. Ooh, I can't wait to get back. I can't wait. To, I, I, that's all I want to see, Louisville. Two more miles, three more miles. Louisville, I just want to touch the ground. Sure. I used to feel like just jumping out of the car, just kissing it when I made it. But like I said, what was so beautiful about that is coming, coming out of the sunshine, going into the cloud and the rain, and then turning around, God turning it around, and it being daylight, just bright, beautiful summerish again. God just took me through and he showed me, I'm with you. I'm with you through the good, through the storm, and through the rain. I'm with you. I, I, I'm going to leave and guide you. You, you fear, you, you think when it's nice out that you in control, that oh, you can see and everything, but I'm going to show you, look, it's raining, and you scared now. You don't think you got control. You in the storm now. Now you calling on me. Yeah, but I'm, I, I was there over there with you. I was with you. Baby girl, I was with you over there. I love you. I'm looking out for you even when it's, when it's no storm, when the sun's on the rise, and I'm with you. And okay, here's the storm. Hey, hey, I'm still with you. I'm not leaving you. I'm still taking care of you. Look at the car, it's still, it's still functioning. I'm with you. And now look, it's daylight again. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm not going to leave you. I got you. And those are the got you moments. Not, okay, I got you, whatever you want to do. I got you. Just keep walking. Yes, things going to rise, storms going to come. I got you. I got you. I'm with you in it. I'm with you in it. You crying, I'm with you. I got your handkerchief. It's awesome. Like I said, not my will, but that will be done. So with that being said, um, oh, you know, it's, God is, he's awesome. I was going to tell you about uh, yesterday, uh, Yesterday I went to the store and uh, I was taking a part bag for the car and in the process because I couldn't work on the car so I had to take the part bag because I couldn't get to the part, to the thing so I took the part bag and got my money back. But in the meantime while I'm in line, all of a sudden there was a guy arguing with the people in the store and the idols on. Uh, you can tell he's a little intoxicated, plus the smell it on his breath, but he's arguing with the man, which he made a good point, but he was trying to argue that, you know, the car part didn't work, and he wanted his money back, and all this type of thing, and he's arguing with the employee, and the employee's telling him one thing, and he's arguing, saying another. So, the guy behind me, he's kind of wanting to agitate a little bit, he's like, yeah, I, I, I understand that point, I understand that point. So I'm praying to God, please, Jenna, shut up. Don't, you know, don't say nothing. Don't talk. So I'm like, he just kept on saying So I said, well, you know, I had that situation. And this is how God uses your adversity to bless somebody. I always, don't hate your, don't hate your, uh, don't hate your storms. Don't hate them. Because God's using them, your difficulties, your problems, God uses those, your blessings, whatever. He's using it to bless somebody else. Usually your problem. He uses it. And so, your adversity. So, the uh, he, the man behind me kept talking. So, at, uh, in my head, I was saying, running his mouth. So, anyway. So, I said, no. I said, uh, he's arguing with him. I said, but I've had that before. I've had three starters before. I purchased three starters from that store. And it went out. But, thank God, rather than me get real angry, I talked to what, one of the people that was working with me. The per employee explained to me. The, car, the, the uh, starters are rebuilt. They come from another manufacturer and they're rebuilt. And so they will have that problem. Some of them will work, some will not work. And so it is a chance that you can get three. Like the lady had told me one time I was in, she said, we had some that come in there like five. You know, two of them we tested before they put, took them out of the, out, the, out the store and they were messed up. And so one of those was the problem he had. So the point I was making to the gym and that can happen, he still didn't kind of understand what I was saying. So, long story short, the man, he kept arguing with the man. I'm like, oh, Lord, I want my money back. I need my money. So, uh, any other time, I would have just said, forget it and walk out. But God was like, stay. So, I'm like, I'm staying. So, 
the man told the employee of the store said he was gonna call the police. He was trying not to, but the man didn't want to leave. You know, he had got to the point. He said, "Take your money. I take the part. Take the money out of the store." So he was like, "Nah." Then he was saying, "Yeah." Then he said, "No." So eventually, the guy was calling the police. So the guy was still walking around. He done knocked some stuff off the shelf. I'm like, "Oh Lord." So I'm like, mm -hmm. and God said, talk. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to get in it because he might cuss me out. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go there. God said, talk. So while the man was first, I said, for real, I said, believe me. I said, yeah, I had it happen to me before. So I'm telling the man who was arguing. I said, dude, you know, he's frustrated. I said, look, I've been there. I've had it before. I said, rather than have the police come, I said, why don't you just take your money? Just take the money. I said, it's not worth it. Take the money, go to Napa, go, you know, not knocking the store because I get poor stuff. But like I said, in that situation, there are certain parts that you get and they, a real person would tell you, they tell you, certain things you get there, it's you taking a chance. Because he was mad because his truck wouldn't start. So I was like, you know, you know, so I was like, you know, woo woo, I put my sense with it. So he was like, okay, yeah, you right, right. And then he was like, yeah, you right. And then, then the guy behind me, ah, I didn't understand what he was saying, this or that. And, you know, so then I'm like, yeah, but you was agitating him out at first. Well, you was getting the man to the point where he was getting more angry. Because you up are condoning his behavior, which you didn't even understand. It was the different ones. It wasn't the same store. It was different store that the man had purchased, and they didn't work. So, anyway, he calmed down for a minute. So, then he started back up. So, by that time, the police came. And you already know, hmm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not in it. You know, because I already said my part, and you could have left. The man told you to take your money. Then you was getting ready to get the money, and the man was saying it. Then the police got there. Then you started up more. So they got me and got my money, and I, I was like, I'm done. I, you know, but, I mean, that's me. If you can, if God tell you to intercede in some things, sometimes you can't. Sometimes just to quiet in the storm, you know. And like I said, though, I said my part, you know, and uh, it felt good to be involved. Because people are quick to talk about, oh, let's stop the violence. Why, you know, why are they killing each other and all that? Things like that, that just the police beating people and all that type of thing. All of that comes from situations like that. When if, if we can't step in and intercede, uh, if I can step in and intercede and say something to try to help my fellow man, then that's what I'm going to do. But when you keep on and you want to go out and out of hand with it now, I mean, you know, but I pray, I don't know, I didn't stay for the situation. I pray that he didn't get locked up. I pray that he got his money back. And he went out and purchased it somewhere else. You know. But, uh, like I said, I thank God for that adversity because it was a time when I was going through it myself. I was like, oh my God, for real? Three, three starters and are not working? What is this about? And we have to remember, sometimes we go through things not for us, but we going through things for somebody else. And so, look at that. It calmed him down. And I think when the police, after they kept talking to him, you know, which they wasn't bad. They was trying to explain. You know, they didn't come in real judgmental, like, what's up, what's up, I'm angry. They were standing there listening to his situation. Because, yeah, we are frustrated. And then the police even told him, I heard that much before I left. Is that we can't do nothing about this, you know? We can we, you know, we can't get into this right here, you know. But so, like they said, they was trying to give him his money back. So, I guess he had taken it, you know. But uh, yeah. But you know, when you drinking, drinking and thinking don't often mix. So that's the part, you know. A lot of times people don't want to look at themselves, and that's that was the issue right there. He would have been more clear, clear headed. You know what I'm saying? If he hadn't had that drink in him, he would have thought about that. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, this is making sense. But drinking, he was just getting frustrated. And then this is what got to me, too. He made this statement before he walked over toward me. He made the statement. He made the statement. Ah, oh, they acting like I'm a little bee. Dude, <laughs> you know, and that's what made me too hurry up and, and, and you know, guys, they saying speak up. You know, can't nobody make you be like nothing. You drinking and then your pride, you you putting pulling your pride in there. I've been there doing that. You put your pride and ego in there. 
you know, I'll, well, we talk uh, like the person who totally uh, uh, made up their mind and got up that day to give you a bad part. They said they're going to kick you out of all the people in the room to touch They're going to kick you to give you a bad part. You know, I'm not saying God is even testing them out there. I'm saying that you was drinking and you should have been, you, you, mm, you could have dealt with that situation a bit in a better manner. But to call yourself, uh, uh, I, I'm going to be, you know, they playing me like I'm going to be. You, you, your alcohol thinking is making you escalate a simple situation. It had nothing to do with you like that. You just happened to, it rains on the just and the unjust. You happen to be a person that continually receives a bad part. Okay, the only thing that could be handled and dealt with in that situation, which he did make a good point when he said, give me the old one. And the man explained to him, I cannot give you the old one, which is true. I've been there. If you put the old starter back on and bang it, it will start 9 out of 10 times until you get another one. But the man said it was gone. And it happened like two weeks ago or something. He had been going through all of that. But drinking and thinking don't always mix. It's not good, especially when you're trying to handle business and deal with people. So I just hate that that person thinks that. Don't I, I mean, just that's something. Don't don't put yourself down and and put your manhood. You know, that's the, that's where he went with it. Your manhood over somebody's trying to play you. That's why so many people getting killed now. You punking me out. Now you can't punk me out. You know you owe me. And everybody seen me give you that money. And now you didn't give me my nickel back. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to kill you. Now nah, come on, dude. Let's rise above it. Let's get out of that. Because I've been there and done that myself. That pride and ego jumps in real quick. And I'm going to show you who I am. Yeah, them, I show, I'm going to show you who I am. Gets you into a whole lot of uh, awkward situations that you can't get out of. And then when you do get it, the consequences of that irrational thinking, big word, then you, oh, God, help me. What did I do? I'm getting 25 years over a nickel. 25 years over a nickel, killing somebody over a nickel. For real. Are you angry? Like when he knocked the things off the shelf. It could have been the same as getting in a car and driving and almost hit killing somebody because you're angry. You know. Let's not put our egos and our pride into to situations that's, that we don't understand. That's outside of us. Let's just deal with it. Let's, let's not go in places drinking. Let's not do that. Because when you go in places drinking, like I said, drinking and thinking is not always good. Especially dealing with people. Sit down. Get somebody else to go. Oh, I just had a moment just thinking. You know, like I said, I've been there and done that myself. And we shouldn't let that pride and ego. That's what that was, pride and ego. He hurried up. He's making me out of too. Calm down. It's not all that. Man, you just got three bad starters. Okay, here's the situation. What am I going to do now? Okay, get my money back. Okay, now what? Well, it's another store down the street. Let me go there. Ah, hello. Ah, maybe I could go to another auto zone. And try theirs. You know. Think. Which when I was talking to him, I named three different places he could have went to to get started. Because he didn't comprehend this is how, 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 how drinking is not great when you're handling business to that capacity because I could smell that he was reaping the liquor. Also, he was assuming that he was going to get the old one back. It, it does not tell him how much damage. I know a little bit about starters. Hello. If that, if that uh, I don't know the total name of things, but if that gut, that part that jumps out and, and ignites to get that starter going, if that is tore up, if that's not fucking the solenoid, thank you, Jesus. If that solenoid is bad, it's not going to start anyway. So for you to have already taken it out, don't mean they're putting, putting it back on. It's not going to, there wasn't any guarantee it was going to start. So you, you're still building up. You're making yourself angry over something unnecessary. So, I mean, I just said that because one of us today is going to get in that situation. And we need to look at that. So, like I said, I'm guilty of road rage. <laughs> so, hello. 
I'm not going to tell you something that I haven't done, or I haven't experienced, or I'm going to experience, you know. So, like I said, God bless you and God keep you. And like I said, you know, I know when I'm talking and saying this, I don't know if a lot of people are listening. But anyway, you know, for the people that do hear, you know, I know it's not just me going through the situation, but I'm hoping to help somebody else out. Because I know how it is. Well, I don't want to take that job. It's far away. You know, I don't want to take a job. If God meant for me to have a job, he would do that. Yep, man, I thought that. But at the same time, we turn around with all them bills rolling in and God sitting up saying, uh, what's that little joke? It's a beautiful one. Beautiful illustration. Uh, the man was stranded on an island. Y'all know that story. The man, they learned to taught me a lesson real quick about mm, picking and choosing on who and what's going to bless me. Nah, I don't do that. But, uh, the little story goes, the man was on the island, and he turned around, and uh, he kept praying, and, God, and a boat went back. He said, no, nah, God didn't send it. You know, then a helicopter went back. He said, no, nah, God didn't send it. Then a, 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 a ship or something came back. He said, no, nah, God didn't send it. And then he sat there, and then he ended up dying or getting ready to die or whatever on the island. And he turned around, Lord, why didn't you rescue me? He said, I sent you a boat and a <laughs> We so busy looking for, you know, God's going to up. Beat me up, Scotty. And we miss our blessings. And I've been there myself. We miss that best man. We miss that best woman. We miss that. We miss the children, the, the blessing our children and seeing our children's teeth come out and seeing our children grow. Because we so busy waiting sometimes for this big old giant uh, beam to come down and move us. We better stop. We better stop because time is winding down. And I'm not one of them people to keep on talking about, yeah, you know, it's the end of the world. I don't like saying that. But I'm like, it's some things that can happen. God can bring about some things. Wow. Ooh, that'll make you think about it. You know, make you rethink your thinking. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. You know. Mm -mm. I'd rather have the world be against me than God. Because God, you know, all the little, little things, little areas of your life, that will make you wish you was dead. That's all I gotta say. The world gonna pick and keep trying to seek and find way. But God knows how to get to you when he wanna get to you. You know, he knows how to get to you. Think about it. I believe that's why he stood back. You know it. God didn't test Job. He didn't do nothing to Job. He allowed the devil to test him. God didn't cause God knows. God knew what really, really, really would have would have made him faint. He knew what it made would have made him faint. And that makes you wonder what would have been, what, what really was it? What really would have made him being? What would have really made him cuss out God? God knows what it was. God knew exactly what it was. That would have made him being and fold it up. Satan didn't know. That's why Satan kept on trying different things. Because this shows you too. That Satan don't know all about us. That's why Satan's always coming up there and picking with us. Because he don't know. He don't know how to really hurt us. He just comes up and he tries to think of things. He taps us every now and then. The evilness does. But God knows exactly how to get you. And that's why I'm like, uh-uh. Now, nah, we okay. <laughs> so, like I said... I pray for everybody that's going to start a new job. I pray for all the children that's get ready to return to school. I pray for all the people that's in doubt that there is a God. I pray that your spirit be opened up, your eyes be opened up, your nose, your ears be opened up so that you can hear, smell, see a word or something that will help you believe. I'm not trying to make you. I'm just praying that. I'm praying that, that you get to know him. That you get to know him. Well, there's time to enjoy his presence. Not wait till the last minute when you're on your deathbed talking about, oh, now I, I, I do. I understand. There is a guy now. Find him now. Find him now. So you can enjoy him now. So you can have the children and friends and bring people to him. You know, but love him now. Like I said, I didn't plan to be long, but those things was on my heart, and I wanted to get them off. And like I said, uh, it's so sweet to be saved. God bless you.
Thank you. Bye-bye.